The Master's Mysteries, Tales of Magical Mastery, Episode 49. Let's talk about this old man, squatting at his own doorstep, smoking the dry pipe. He was feeling anxious, thinking about that young man named Leo, who said he was going to subdue demons, but he hasn't come back yet. I hope nothing unexpected happened. While the old man was worrying, suddenly there came a series of knocks on the door. It made him very happy because he was the only household in the village, and the person knocking on the door must be that young man coming back. Finally, you're back. I was so worried. The old man rushed over to open the courtyard gate, but his expression changed instantly because there were three people standing at the door. To pass through here, you need my permission. This mountain is under my control. Don't utter a single word. Leave your money behind as toll. This tree was planted by me. I decide who lives and who dies. Immediately after, the familiar mountain song rang in his ears. Old man, quickly hand over all your money or we'll force you to do it. It's you again. The three mountain bandits who robbed him in town had somehow ended up here. Hand over the money. Hurry up. Why is it you again? Didn't expect to have repeat customers. Huh. It's the same guy from last time. Tonight, you get an 80% discount. That fat old man. Who do you think we are? Doing business. At this moment, the three guys also noticed that the old man in front of them looked familiar. Seems like they had met before. This time that young man won't be here to protect you. Hand over the money now. Dealing with familiar faces is much easier. After all, he had gone through this once before. So let's do it again. Even if you scream your lungs out, it won't help. 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 The old man was frightened, shouting at the top of his lungs, but there was no one else in the village. Would his screams really help? How lively it is! Unexpectedly, someone responded to his scream. Several people quickly heard a young man's voice from behind. The three silly of Liodong meet again. The three turned around, and to their surprise, it was the young man who had ruined their plan last time. Didn't I tell you, don't push us? Boys, it's the three ferocious men of Liado. But this time, they didn't appear so weak. Instead, they yelled back with great vigor. Well, well, you've gained some backbone. After hearing their words, Liao Feng leaped down from the gate tower. Even though the three ferocious men of Liado seemed fierce this time, the result was the same. After just a few rounds, they were all moaning on the ground again. We used our feet earlier, now let's try our fists. Big brother, don't misunderstand. We were just worried about him. We came to visit and didn't know the way home. It's all a misunderstanding, sir. Then the scene changed, and the three quickly put on smiling faces, doing a complete 180 degree turn in their attitude. Since you're all home safely, we'll go back now, sir. We won't fight you anymore. But remember, the next time we meet, we'll definitely beat you up. The three spoke while moving toward the entrance and then, in a split second, turned around and ran away. Speaking of those three, they rushed out of Zhang Lao Han's house in a panic and ran into Miss Chiati. There was a young girl. Just now, Liao Feng heard Zhang Lao Han's call for help and took a step forward while Chiodi followed behind and unexpectedly ran into the three ferocious men of Liadong. Big brother, third brother, wait. Seeing Chiodi, the three men immediately stopped in their tracks. They didn't expect to encounter a beautiful girl all alone at this late hour. I want to have some fun with her. This is not your expertise. Let us help you. Together. These guys seem to have lost their minds. They had just run away in embarrassment, but now they had evil intentions. Girl, I'll be very gentle. Oh my, she's so beautiful. With a wicked smirk, the three of them encircled Siati. Come on, give your big brother a kiss. Be our wife, and we'll protect the village together. These three guys were too preoccupied with the pretty girl and failed to notice what Siati was holding in her hand. 
At that moment, the third man among the three ferocious men of Liaodong fell for it. He felt a shadow flash before his eyes, and something whipped hard across his face. He immediately let out a miserable scream and was sent flying, leaving the other two speechless. Aren't you jealous of him? Only then did the two realize that the delicate girl in front of them was holding a whip that moved like a serpent. At this point, they finally understood, but it was too late. They saw a blur, and two slaps echoed through the air. Their faces were burning with pain. In no time, Shiaudi's whip was flying up and down, and the screams of the three men grew increasingly desperate. When Shiaudi finally stopped, the three men's bodies were covered in swollen bloody marks. Do we want to continue playing this whip game? What are you saying, miss? We are all respectable gentlemen. Please don't insult our character. Kyoti, are you okay? Meanwhile, Liao Feng, worried about Kyoti's safety, had rushed out to meet her. To his surprise, he ran into the three ferocious men of Liadong, and his sudden appearance frightened them. I was so scared, if you were a moment later. However, what surprised them even more was the scene unfolding behind him. The violent girl who had looked like a female devil just a moment ago was now shivering and whimpering. How dare you act like heroes? It's really not what you think. You bastards. Nothing worse than pigs and dogs. The sight before them was utterly inexplicable. Being beaten up again, they realized that they must never mess with women. They were just too terrifying. A girl outside should know some martial arts, or it's too dangerous. Thanks to you. We believed. She really was a female devil. I thought you just came back. You came back and left again. Turns out it was to pick up your bride. Leaking the three ferocious men of Liaodong. Aside, let's return to Liao Feng and Chiodi in Zhang Lao Han's house. Please don't misunderstand. She's not my bride. They really are a perfect match. As Zhang Lao Han uttered these words, both young faces turned beet red. Thanks to Xiaodi, the yellow demon has been eliminated. However, when Xiaodi's gaze swept towards the interior of the house, her expression changed. She seemed to have detected some special aura. Mr. Zhang, the person inside is. Carefully observing for a moment, Xiaodi discovered that the aura came from inside the house. Her attention was then drawn to the person lying on the kine. That's my wife. She's been sick for over a year and hasn't woken up. Upon Xiaodi's inquiry, Zhang Laohan sighed and briefly explained his wife's condition. She's not sick. After observing for a while, Xiaodi's lips curved up. What? You can cure her. But I can heal her, Mrs. Zhang. Upon saying this, Xiaodi expressed her ability to cure Zhang's wife, leaving Zhang Laohan overjoyed. Sir, Please bring me three incense sticks and three chicken eggs. Sure, we have them at home. Since the things Xiaodi requested were readily available at home, Zhang Laohan quickly prepared them. Miss, these are not for Mrs. Zhang. They are offerings for the immortals. In response to Zhang Laohan's question, Xiaodi explained busily. Immortals. However, when the word immortal left Xiaodi's mouth, both Liao Fengi and Zhang Laohan were left dumbfounded. Yes, the immortals. As soon as Xiaodi finished speaking, she pulled a silver needle from her sleeve and pricked the old lady's temple. Xiaodi's method proved effective. As soon as she withdrew the silver needle, the old lady suddenly opened her eyes. She's not Mrs. Zhang. Old lady, are you all right? Following this, the old lady immediately sat up, leaving Zhang Lao Han wide-eyed with surprise. After all, this was a patient who had been lying on the Kang for over a year. I am immortal Bai Lingji from the Bai family. Indeed, just as Xiaodi had said, the old lady rose from the Kang with ease and then spoke. However, her voice didn't sound like Zhang's wife. From now on, when you need my help, silently recite my name in your heart, and I will come." Right after mentioning the words immortal, Liao Fengi 
and Zhang Lao Han were left dumbfounded. Sure, which immortal wouldn't endure some hardship? I'll help her, and she will be all right. Xiaodi explained as she took out a silver needle from her sleeve again and inserted it towards the old lady's temple. Xiaodi's method worked like magic. As soon as she withdrew the silver needle, the old lady opened her eyes wide. Old lady. When immortal Bai left, the old lady's head immediately dropped, and she reverted to her original appearance as an ordinary rural old woman. Old man, I dreamt of immortal Bai Lingxi. Wife, you're awake. Following immortal Bai's departure, the old lady spoke. This is wonderful. We never expected such fortune. They were overjoyed to have become acquaintances with an immortal and that they had their troubles resolved. From now on, we will perform more good deeds for the immortals. Thank you, miss. You truly are our benefactor. Turning around, Zhang Lao Han thanked Siadi with tears in his eyes, getting emotional as he spoke. This left Liao Fengi, who was from the Central Plains, quite puzzled. It was unbelievable to see people being so happy after having a demonic possession. What about myself and Ahu? Liao Fengi seemed to remember something suddenly.